in eight European nations would like to live, this is a quote, in a world where chemical substances don't exist. <laughs> where chemical substances don't exist. From the Asgard Company Studios in beautiful Wichita Falls, Texas, from the finest mind in the modern fitness industry, the one true voice in the strength and conditioning profession, the most important podcast on the internet. Ladies and gentlemen, Starting Strength Radio. Welcome back to Starting Strength Radio. Good Friday to you. We are coming to you not live. I'm sorry, this is not live. This is a recording, but we're recording it from our studios and in uh, beautiful downtown Wichita Falls, Texas. We are live. We're live to us right now. We're live. This is as live as it can be. You know, it's just that by the time these other people see or hear this, it will not be live. It will be dead, but it'll be a recording. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, uh, today we're going to do a Q and a, uh, where you send us terribly interesting questions and we treat them seriously. And uh, actually use them for show, what would you call it, platforms for, or, 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 or yeah, a platform for discussion, a, what am I trying to say, a springboard for, springboard for discussion, that's right. See, I'm getting platform and springboard diving confused because <laughs> of my vast exposure to so many sports in my life. And uh, so we're going to use this as a springboard, this question pile here. We've got for, uh, a springboard for discussion today. But first, comments, comments from, from the haters. The haters. <laughs> Benjamin Zawi, that is... All of the vowels except <laughs> the E. It's Z A O U I. All he needs an E in there to get the whole damn thing. The whole shooting match, right? Rip, don't listen to the haters. Yes, you're ugly and have a pot belly, but you're the man. <laughs> All right, now, uh, let me. All right. Bree, honey, I want to ask you honestly. Do you think I'm ugly? No. You sure? Positive. You're not just saying that because you work for us? I'm not just saying that. Well, I don't know. I think they should post pictures of themselves before they. Yeah, you know, that's a very good point. Benjamin, before you say that Rip is ugly, maybe we need to see a picture of you, honey. Is there a way that you could? Follow up on this and post a picture of your handsome young ass on comments from the haters. Okay. Tommy Sticks says, in a fairly predictable, but the spirit of the comment is predictable, of course, but the interesting way in which it's, it's, uh, uh, characterized is is fascinating. If the presenter's physique is any indication, this is the program to follow if you want to be built like a butt plug. <laughs> <laughs> that might be my favorite one. I don't know, man. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> Milk like a butt plug. Oh, and this one is the this is the choicest one we've had in quite some time. JK four oh seven says Rip's mouth always look so moist. <laughs> that grossed me the fuck out. <laughs> God JK you realize that I'm not available to you. Right? <laughs> I'm I'm just not available. Well, I don't know. Maybe J.K.'s a girl. You ever thought about that? Maybe. Probably not. Girls don't think this way. Oh, they think that way. They just don't. 
They just don't talk. They don't even type that way on the <laughs> internet. <laughs> All right. Well, that's comments Comment. from, from the, the haters. haters. Oh, God. So, <clears throat> this has been an interesting couple of weeks in the news. Don't you think? Interesting couple of weeks in the in the news with all of the, uh, just for historical reference purposes, those of you watching this podcast, since we already confessed that it's a recording, those of you in the far distant future, this thing was recorded the week that the House of Representatives decided to impeach Donald Trump and then decided at the same time not to send the impeachment <laughs> articles to the Senate. <laughs> making us wonder why it is we haven't recently seen one of these polls uh, that that review periodically, time to time, uh, Americans' satisfaction with Congress. <laughs> oh, God. How do you get below 6%? That's the last one. I, <laughs> last one I saw was 6%. Zero percent. Is anybody in the United States satisfied with Congress right now? Uh, I think I speak for most sentient beings by saying no, they're not. So that just that's the historical setting of today's of today's podcast. Those of you in the far distant future, when the sun is a red giant, billions of years from now that are watching this podcast. Uh, know what week it was in human history. That is an important, of, important uh, reference for, for November, historical purposes. November 14th, the approval yeah. rating was 24%. 24%? 24%. As of November 14th. Mm -hmm. Where did I get the 6%? <sighs> Maybe that's just my estimate of current uh, the, the satisfaction. The 6% uh, was in June, and that was no opinion. Six percent had no opinion. Well, I was just wrong on that. I was rude. Happens occasionally. Well, in your defense, twenty four percent is pretty fucking. Low. In my defense, twenty four percent is is uh, not much of a percent. Is it? No. <laughs> not much of a percent. Especially because that twenty four percent is probably mentally ill. <laughs> yep. If you're satisfied with these people, your standards are low. That's absolutely true. Here's something that came out yesterday that I thought was, I grabbed this last night. Uh, and this is off of a, a column, uh, a blog that's that's uh, consistently good called the Volok Conspiracy. Eugene Volok posts this thing, and, and he's posted this guest piece by Ilya Soman at that the, the title of this is Study Finds Almost 40% of People in eight European nations would like to live, this is a quote, in a world where chemical substances don't exist. <laughs> where chemical substances don't exist. Oh, my God. Have you? Oh, oh shit. This is, and the reason I pulled this up is because I, you know, we here in the United States, have been beaten about the head and shoulders with the idea that the European nation's uh, population is so much better educated than we are. <laughs> why, they're, why, they're Germans. They're members of the European Union. They, their education system is far superior to this terrible system we have over here. And... Uh, now, don't get me wrong. The United States education system is is terrible. It's not getting the job done. But if you've got almost half of the population of Europe that doesn't understand what a chemical substance is, then <laughs> these people are not particularly well prepared to understand about GMO foods and global warming either, are they? <laughs> Climate change. Oh, my God. 
Uh, look, you, you people don't seem to understand that there has never been an hour in the history of this planet where the climate has not been in the process of changing. The climate always has changed. You can wonder about, you know, how much CO2 is making a difference, how much water vapor is making a difference, how much methane is making a difference, how much anthropogenic causes, how, how much anthropogenic causation, how much anthropogenic causation there is to climate change. But the climate's always changing. Uh, I would like for the geniuses in the European Union to tell me what temperature they want it to be. What temperature should it be in July and what temperature should it be in December? Please tell me so we'll know how to make it that way. <laughs> but it's 40% of the people... Every, every study published in Nature Chemistry finds 39% of respondents in eight European countries say they agree with the statement that I would like to live in a world where chemical substances don't exist. Now, another 30%, 39% say they slightly agree or slightly disagree with this statement. Similarly, 40% say they do everything I can to avoid contact See that this is such a badly written sentence. They do everything I can to avoid contact with chemical substances in my daily life. All right, studies authors, Swiss academics M Michael Segrist and Angela Berth, a couple of cynical bastards, by the way. You'll have to admit that to submit this kind of a <laughs> survey question to general population probably designed to make everybody look like a fucking dumbass. They knew what they, yeah, were. They, knew what they were doing. Uh, because they know their population over there. Uh, you know, they... they, they this, this <laughs> so they go on to talk all about this. It may be tempting to make fun of scientific illiteracy in Europe, but we Americans are in no position to judge, surveys in the, in the U.S. routinely find similar ignorance in this country. For example, some 80% of Americans say they want mandatory labeling of food containing DNA. <laughs> oh, anytime we see the stuff that the general public is participating in, it's just... Uh, and, and, and the reason I've dragged this shit in here today is because I just want you people who are still with us, still hanging in here to understand that, uh, the general public is at the mercy of anybody that will pretend to be an authority on anything. All right? The general public, the poor creatures, just don't know. They haven't been prepared. They don't understand. They can't understand. Don't be part of the general public. Think about things that you're told. Okay? And... Uh, don't just swallow things whole, you know, it's not good for you to do that. Okay. So I've carefully read all these things. I think yesterday afternoon, did I see all of these Bree? Mm -hmm. yesterday? I did, didn't I? All right. So we'll just start one at a time and take them apart. Hi, I am a UK personal trainer based in a commercial gym. Have you ever noticed that everybody in the UK is based someplace? <laughs> They're not from there. 
No, they're based out of the UK. They always say that. I, I, I see it over and over and over. I don't say I'm based out of Wichita Falls. I say I live in Wichita Falls. Based out of Texas? I'm based out of Texas. No, I just live here. But everybody in the UK is based out of someplace. This guy's based in a commercial gym. It's an interesting idiom. It really is. I use the starting strength method as well as the principles played out in practical programming. Played out practical programming from clients. However, I can only control what happens when my clients are in front of me. Many of them do not work out outside of our sessions. And if they do, they do, they do not do the prescribed workout plan. So most of my clients are only getting one to two proper strength sessions a week. They're making progress, although slower than it would be with the optimal programming. How do you deal with this situation? Uh, well, I, I, you, you really can't. You, you really can't. If you're only seeing these people twice a week, at least they're getting two exposures per week to proper strength and conditioning. The problem you've got is all this other stupid bullshit these people are doing while they're not in front of you, which undoes some of the progress. Now, if you provide one or two proper strength training sessions a week for these people, and they're training outside the gym, and the thrashing around that they're doing outside the gym consists of stupid shit like 100 air squats or 40 100-meter sprints or similar uh, low-intensity, high-volume overtraining, then it's going to blunt the effects of your good program. And the only thing you can do is to please, is to ask them, please don't do that. Uh, if you don't have them three days a week and you can't control what they do while they're outside the gym, uh, then you haven't got control of the program. And if you haven't got control of the program, my advice to you is just to cash the check. Just cash the check. You're doing what you can do. You have no control. You have no control. And if you have no control, you can't control the outcome. All right? So just don't worry about it. Just cash the check. This is part of being in the commercial end of this business. Rip, your thoughts on TRT, testosterone replacement therapy, after 50 years of age. I'm 52 and enjoy lifting and life in general. I self-administer approximately 500 milligrams a week of testosterone and love the boost it gets. I bet you do. <laughs> Look, if you're doing 500 milligrams a week, you're just doing a bunch of tests. <laughs> you're not doing testosterone replacement therapy. You're just doing a bunch of tests. Don't hog it all, dude. If you want to do a bunch of tests, go right ahead. I'll bet it does give you a boost. But that's <laughs> you know, way more than you need to be doing a week if you are 50 and doing testosterone replacement therapy. Okay. I mean, look, if you want to do steroids, do steroids. I don't care. But don't, don't call it TRT. God damn. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. More on doping. Right? Uh, just curious if you have watched the Netflix documentary Icarus. I have not. It's good. It's real good. Uh, Rusty's seen it. Bree just looked it up a minute ago. I, I know what it's about. I would like to know your opinion in one, of the, in one of the claims made at the end of the documentary. It is impossible. This is a quote. It is impossible to get a gold medal at the Olympics without doping. All right. I don't know that it's impossible, but I do know that it's just not done. You know, uh, this is uh, going to come as a shock to some of you more innocent people, at the highest levels of athletics, elite athletics, people that do that are not interested in fitness. They're not interested in health. They're not interested in what happens to them 40 years from now. They're interested in winning. 
And the fact that they are in the elite levels of the sport means they're very, very, very interested in winning. They're interested in winning to the exclusion of everything else. Everything else. And everything else includes laws and regulations and your little proletariat version of fairness and every other concern. They're not, their concerns are not your concerns. Their concerns are winning. And whatever it takes to win, they will do. Now, they, some of them are operating on bad information. For example, Barry Bonds took a bunch of steroids as a professional baseball player in lieu of doing his squats and deadlifts. Now, this does not reflect on Mr. Bonds because he was relying on expert coaches, expert personal trainers or whatever these guys hire for, uh, for information about what to do. And he was told to take steroids. He's concerned with his $80 billion a year salary, and so he took some steroids. Okay? It shouldn't come as a shock to you that at the elite levels of competition, the people that perform at that level are not motivated the way you are. They're not concerned about fairness. They're not concerned about anything except winning. They don't care if they have to go talk to John McCain in the Senate. All right? God, that'd be enough to make me want to kill myself before. <laughs> but, you know, so they, they're going to do whatever they need to do to win. And you just need to get used to the idea because that's what's going to happen. And that's what does happen. And let's not be naive about it, shall we? Let's just enjoy the performance for what it is the pinnacle of human physical performance. Just enjoy it for what it is and quit worrying about how the, how it got that way. Just, you know, it, it just it, it got that way in whatever way it was necessary to get that way because that's what these guys will do. They'll all do it, and if you can't deal with that, then quit paying attention to sports, all right? You can't have it your way. All right, they're going to use drugs. Get over it. Quit worrying about it. Enjoy it for what it is. All right. One thing that a um, documentary really hit home was steroids will not make you an elite athlete. You can do all the steroids in the world, but you're not going to place with these people. These people are freak athletes to begin with, and then they do steroids because they have to. Yeah, one of the most offensive things that's ever happened was back in the nineteen back in the late eighties when the Carl Johnson or the Ben Johnson Carl Lewis thing took place. Uh, and it was suddenly revealed to the American public that Mr. Johnson had taken testosterone or anabolic steroids in order to excel in his sprint performance. And what was completely absent from the four-week discussion of this on every news media outlet, what was completely absent from that was any mention of the fact that Ben Johnson and Carl Lewis were right there. One had win, the other had win. One had win, they're competitors, they're freaks. They're amazing sprinters. They're not like me and you. They're these people are the they're they're genetic marvels. They're physical geniuses. All right. They both use drugs. Because that's the last two percent. Right? But what did the media do? The media spent four weeks teaching every high school kid in the United States that all you've got to do to beat Carl Lewis, like Ben Johnson did, is take a bunch of steroids. Now, you don't think that had a significant effect? Well, you're a dumbass, all right? This is just one more way that the media fucks up everything they touch. They're evil. They're parasites. 
They're, they're round worms. Stay away from them. Don't talk to the media. Don't absorb the media. Don't believe anything they say, ever. Because they're pieces of shit. All right? I hope that's clear. All right.